Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Gina again with my abstractings mixed media stuff. <laughs> I am working on number 22 of this series that I started unknowingly that it was going to turn out to be a series, but I'm enjoying it so much that it turned into a series. So I started off with a page that had leftover paint and I'm using uh, Posca pens, some acrylic paint markers to just make some marks on my page. I already like the colors that's on it, so I'm just adding to it. Not really sure what's coming up next, but I'm just going with the flow as per usual. This thing that I have here, it's a found object. It has netting and wire. I don't know what it is, what it's for, but it makes some really nice marks. So I'm just using that to make some prints on the page, add some nice character. I hope you all are creating too, as you know, I am. Just enjoying the process of the release that it, it gives. Right now I'm working on toning, toning down the background. I'm just kind of pushing it back but I'm not using white. I wanted to keep the, well, it's not really keep the color, but I wanted to continue the tone of the page. So I'm pushing it back, but using color to do it. Yes, I hope you all are creating along with me and I hope it's inspiring you to create. I'm just putting back my marks here because I thought they looked really cool and they kind of disappeared. So I'm just adding them back into my page, still intending for it to be a background. And I didn't want uh, such straight lines, so I did that kind of swirly squiggly thing. Now let's add some white space again because my page is just getting too full. adding some contrast I'm applying it with the palette knife and then adding some straight lines you know just to get some nice different kind of visuals for the eye I really like how that looks you know when you put your paint and you scrape through it it's pretty cool so I was just lifting it up to see where I can add more where it would look nice on the eye And for this one, I just I'm just trying to add, uh, apply the paint using different methods instead of just using the brush. So here comes my plastic. What is this? My plastic shape. <laughs> it's like a stencil, but I cut it out. I made it myself. I cut it out of a piece of acetate and. Uh, I'm using a charcoal pencil to draw the shapes because I want to add some water just to smudge it up a bit. And I'm trying to count, trying to keep odd numbers. And now I'm just adding regular water to smudge up my lines. And now what do I do? Sometimes I reach a point where I just, I'm like, what, what's next? I have no idea what to do next. So I counted my circles and I realized that I only had two. So I decided to do three to make it odd. And while I'm thinking about that, I'm just adding in some more marks, still trying to decide what to do. And I'm still looking at it, checking to see if this is enough. I didn't really like the outlines that much, 
so I decided to define it by adding the white to it to also give it some more character and to help it stand out more and it also brightens up the page so I'm just adding some scratchy white lines all around those objects and I'm thinking of blocking out the spaces behind looking at this now I felt at the time that I needed to add another shape because all together it makes four but as I see it now it could work either way because I had one square which is an odd number and then I had three circles which is an odd number so I really could have left it as is instead of adding that extra shape which is kind of even because it ended up being two square shapes well or rectangular I don't know but I left it thinking yes I have my one two three four five shapes so it's odd <laughs> but I guess you could look at it differently so I decided on this one to uh, push back the outside of the shapes and leave the inside with the beautiful art. I love how those, you know, I felt like I could cut out those shapes and have those as little pieces of art. I just found they look really cool. So I'm redefining my edges again. And I still wasn't satisfied, but I'm going to continue pushing it back. I wanted to add more shapes within the shapes I just felt like that was something I wanted to do so I'm just gonna go around measuring by averaging the different shapes that I would like to put inside of those shapes I created So now that I've done this, I found that it's covering too much of my colors and my shapes and my patterns. So I'm trying to figure out how to still show them up while still using the pieces that I cut out. So I'm trying with the, what do you call that, the negative of the shape to see how it looks. Just going around, testing it out. And I'm not sure that I like it. So I'm going to keep fiddling. And this is when I decide that I will just create a border of this shape. So I'm going to cut these out and place them and see if I like it. Okay, so I like how this looks. However, I found that it was just too white. So I'm just going to add some color randomly and haphazardly on it because I still want some white showing, but it 
not completely white like that. And it still wasn't uh, dark enough for me, so I decided just to add some black in some places to help it stand out, quote unquote, some a little bit more on the page. So that's cool but then i found it wasn't really matching with everything it wasn't going together with everything so i'm just gonna go in and add some yellow on all of them hoping that that helps So I'm finally satisfied and I decide to stick them down and then from there I'll decide if I need to add or <laughs> take away anything else. I still found it was kind of disappearing into the page so I decided to uh, do a border, an inside border of black to help it stand out even more. Now I'm going to add my famous little splatters. I'm trying to keep it very light on this one. And that is pretty much it for my page. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it light. <laughs> so thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!